Hi, happy Friday, guys. Um, it's about 1.45 in the morning here for me, and I just woke up, and I really, really wanted to record a quick video for you. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about meditation, about uh, energy work, about all different kinds of things that are so in the space of uh, spiritual awakening and um, the occult and and all this stuff. And what I want to explain to you really quickly is that it's all extra. It's all unnecessary. And it's all coming from a place of believing the answers are to be found outside of you. So whenever I see one of these shiny objects, because essentially that's what they are, they're packaged as this is the answer you've been looking for, right? And it's, you have to go learn something from somebody else or buy somebody else's product to get that result of filling yourself up inside. And so I get that shiny object syndrome too. I do because I'm human, you know? So what happens is I'll, I'll see an energy healer and I really, really want to learn to, uh, you know, work with energy. But when I see that, I'm like, yes, I want that. I want to learn that. I get a really clear message from I am saying, no, Aaron, that's not for you. That's not what you're here to do. And I'm like, but I am, that looks like so much fun. I really, really want to do that. And I am said, there's a lot of people that are here to do that. Okay, that's not what you're here for, Aaron. And I am always bringing me back to what's within me. What is my blueprint? And it's something that's, you know, it happens. I'm not going to say daily, but it happens at least a few times a week where I see something really cool and I'm, I want to go try it. And there's nothing wrong with trying it. But the problem comes in when you believe you need it to fulfill yourself. And so that's why it's so important to start a practice of listening to your own inner voice and trying to start that conversation with your own inner voice so that you can find out what your blueprint is, what it is you're here to do. Because of course, I'm here to uh, spread the message that I am gives me to spread. And um, those other shiny objects, while they might be fun and interesting, they aren't what I'm here to do. And so it's so important for you to feel fulfilled, to find out what it is you're here to do. And, you know, just, just as an aside there, it's not that I, I can't go learn to do energy work. And I plan on doing that in the future when my children are older. It's, it's just not the most pressing thing right now when I have very limited time with my two young children. I have an 11-month-old boy and an almost three-year-old girl. So I, and I, I stay at home with them and work on my I am project and, and everything I'm working out on with I am my next book. So um, time is incredibly limited. So if I were to split my focus and go do that really interesting thing right now, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm actually here to do with I am. So all that being said, please understand that you do not need these outside things to fulfill you. Now, if you're feeling called to do energy work, awesome. That might be what you're here to do, you know, but it's so important to figure out what is your next step. And with all the marketing and um, social media and everything, it's so easy to get sidetracked. So almost every day I have to sit down with I am and say, okay, I am, am I still on the right track? Is this still where I'm going? And a lot of times I'll find that I got sidetracked by a shiny object on social media, you know, um, thinking that maybe I have to go do this or go do this because everybody else says it works for them. And of course, what works for most people probably isn't going to be what works for me or maybe what works for you because we're all here to do something different. And if we are following an expert that has a similar blueprint to us, it, it might work out great, but 
if they have a blueprint that's quite a bit different than ours, then following them is not going to get us where we need to go. So my advice to you would be, if you are wondering what the next step is for you, or if you're wondering if you should go do something like energy work or um, working with crystals or whatever the thing is you you get sidetracked by or get interested in, or you think maybe it's coming from your inner voice, how do you tell the difference? I would write a list of all the things you're interested in doing next or considering doing next. And then I would write down next to them why do you think it's a good idea? And next to that, I would write down, what are the fears that would hold you back from doing it? And I would look and I would look for the one that maybe says, it's a little nuts, right? Other people are going to think it's a little crazy. And it would really scare you to put it out there. And the ones that seem safer, right, that have a clear path that other people are saying will definitely work. Maybe that might be something where the motivation is external. And so you're always, at least for me, and my advice to you would be look for which one, even if the fear level is the highest, which one is coming from a place of internal motivation. And uh, that is something that I sit down and do most nights. Because if I hadn't been doing that, I never would have published uh, One Truth, One Law. Because I am a person that has a million ideas. I'm very creative and ideas are always popping up. And uh, I heard the most amazing quote right before I really dug in and started doing the work to get One Truth, One Law published. And the quote is, um, if you want to dig a hundred foot hole, You can't do it by digging 10, 10 feet holes. And it was like, boom, explosion in my mind, because that's what I had been doing my whole life. I had been starting projects and going in shallowly and never finishing them. And uh, of course, that's what I did with with, uh, One Truth, One Law in 2011. Phil and I started it and we we made the transcripts. We we turned the the tape recordings into transcripts and uh, we put it in the basement then. I kept talking to I am, but I didn't want to hear anything from I am about publishing the book because um, I was so afraid to uh, tell the other people in my lives, my my uh, parents and the rest of my family, I didn't want them to think I was crazy. And um, I actually had a lot of messages from, from you guys telling me things like, well, I have this big crazy dream, but I think maybe I, I'm really meant to be a life coach instead. I can't, I can't believe how many times I, I get a similar email from you guys saying that. But I totally get it because I've been there. I, you know, life coach seems like a, a safe choice. Everybody's doing it right now. Um, but my advice to you would be follow your big crazy dream. And uh, I think you would find that just because everybody's going to be a life coach right now, it doesn't mean that that's what you're here to do. And if that's not your big, crazy dream, it's probably not what you're here to do. You're always here to do your big, crazy dream. Um, And it's not easy for a reason. It's because it takes your whole life to do it. It's not called a day path or a month path or even a year or five year or 10 year path. You have your whole life to follow your path, to follow your blueprint, to be fulfilled. So This has been awesome. Please let me know if you liked this format better than the emails. Honestly, this is a lot more fun for me. Um, So send me an email. Let me know if you prefer the videos and I can switch over to just doing videos. Also, if you like the videos, let me know what you'd like me to talk about next week. And um, if you have questions for IM, send them to me and I will be happy to uh, talk about that stuff. Okay, awesome, thanks.